Hey, what is going on everybody? Today we're going to be trying to be a little bit positive here in Marvel Strike Force and talk about some upcoming content. I'm going to try to contain my salt to the Boiling Point episodes, which by the way uh, should be coming out tomorrow for those who are interested. I'm trying to keep that as a weekly Wednesday show as a way to, you know, get my rage outlet there. Today I want to discuss Scarlet Witch because when I found out that she was getting a rework, oh man, was I hyped and pumped up for this because... And I'm probably a little bit biased because I have a really good Scarlet Witch, uh, but it also made me think about some other character reworks, and which by and large, you know, have been pretty good in this game, at least over the last little while. So I want to take a look at least in terms of that with Scarlet Witch and what she could be like, and give some context behind this. So uh, without further ado, let's get the show on the road. And for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, well, a lot of this has reference to Friday's blog. And that's the first Horseman uh, Pestilence Morgan Le Fay post from uh, March the 4th on Friday. And that aside, and, and you know, this is going to be the brand new team around Morgan uh, and the Darkhold team. It's going to be an arena meta team for those who also missed out on that. Uh, but we did get some information here that Scarlet Witch is going to be a part of this team with three new characters. So uh, this is kind of interesting as well because it's not just two older characters, it's only one older character. And we're going to take a look at some of the character trends, the release trends, uh, to kind of share, you know, both teams that have had one character and teams that have had two older characters. So uh, this might give us a little bit of an idea about what we should expect with Scarlet Witch. And I'm, you know, part of this makes me wonder, is she going to be the next meta queen? You know, as far as older characters go, we have had some pretty sizable reworks from time to time for different characters. So it could stand a reason that maybe she might be really good. Now, as far as the other new characters go for this uh, patch, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but there have been some rumors about this. You know, that's not what this is about. However, uh, I believe that there's been some rumors about Agatha and uh, Evil Strange. Uh, because they said that they were going to make that character rather than the skin, because they got rid of the skin for Doctor Strange. Uh, so whatever they end up calling him, Evil Strange is what I'm calling him. And then as a fifth member, I think that's where a lot of people are stumped at right now. And um, I, I don't know the lore entirely here, but uh, some names that have been thrown around was like Cathon and uh, Mephisto. I think, and I, I don't know, you know, so let me know in the comments down below who you think that fifth character might be, uh, but we're here to talk about Scarlet Witch and why that's kind of important, so I just wanted to give some backstory here for what's going on. The rest of this is all about Morgan. So this Darkhold team is going to be the next meta Apex arena team. And and not just arena because, well, I mean, we don't know the other characters' kits, but, you know, just by looking at Morgan, I mean, it's just, holy sh shit, you know, it's just... <laughs> especially the passive right there's just so much stuff going on so i expect this to be a really good team uh what's interesting at least from the arena context anyways as it relates to scarlet witch is that you're getting 30 percent max barrier which means that you're getting a maximum of 60 percent uh barrier for your team which we'll get to when we talk about scarlet witch's existing kit uh, but now I want to pivot to my character spreadsheet. Now, some of you guys may have seen this is my character data spreadsheet where I keep track of all of the character releases, more or less, uh, and, you know, the dates behind those. And I want to kind of take a look at some of the previous characters in terms of reworks, in, time, in terms of, like, uh, teams that have had legendary characters, and kind of what we might expect with Scarlet Witch. So even as far, I mean, it was probably before that, but really I, I want to start here at Pym Tech. You know, you can kind of tell that really at some point that character reworks got a lot better, you know, and I want to kind of point out certain characters that have had legendaries as well. Pym Tech, not a great example, actually, so that's why we started here, because we had the reworks of Ant-Man and the Wasp, and they were pretty underwhelming, to be honest, compared to what we got afterwards with Ghost being, like, the best character there. Uh, but for Astonishing X-Men, which came out across patch 5.0 in the winter uh, 2020, early 2021, uh, we also had the release of Iceman and Kitty Pride, but then, of course, Jubilee and Bishop. So this was actually an example of a team that that had now it's not an arena team but it's an example of a team that had one new or sorry one old character in the form of beast beast had a very minor rework uh, i believe with the astonishing x-men they had the tag implemented into him and then i think there were certain parts of his passive there's certain parts of his kit that only works with astonishing x-men that does not work with uh, uncanny or regular x-men so there is that but Beast is a very important member of the astonishing x-men so i would put that as far as a you know older character goes as 
pretty, you know, he's probably like the second, third, you know, people say Jubilee and then Bishop and Beast, right? So that's like the best combo, despite Iceman and Kitty being some of the newer characters. So that's kind of interesting too. Fast forwarding a little bit, we have the Heroes for Hire, but that's not a legendary team. So I kind of want to jump to Infinity Watch next because this was a really important patch and it was an arena meta team so we had the new releases of phi lavelle uh, moon dragon and adam warlock of course adam warlock being the legendary and we had the reworks of gamora and nebula now as far as reworks went gamora was just like the creme de la creme chef's kiss right like she was good even outside of her team like yes it took longer for her to get charged and uh for her to turn into her empowered form but she was still really really good though wasn't she like i feel like you didn't even you didn't even need the full team you didn't even need adam warlock to go empowered so i'm wondering as far as comparative reworks go whether or not gamora is just too far um I, I i wonder they never really said the devs never said but like it it does make me wonder if they went a little bit too far with gamora because of how easy it was for her to obtain her empowered form like i said you could probably just do it with nebula and one other character because it was based on how many turns the other members took as well so you could actually get uh turn one empowered with gamora with only two characters so i don't think that scarlet witch is going to get some sort of empowered form however i would like to see uh at the very least significant base stat reworks you know we're talking like well beyond what mordo got like it has to be like like pretty sizable and i think that would kind of uh tell us that yes they respect scarlet witch because she's a powerful not only a powerful character in the comic lore but also a very powerful character in the mcu as well that was proven too so as far as this team infinity watch goes though gamora was pretty much the best character like she was the one that you wanted to get those six and seven reds on asap and geared Phi Lavelle was fairly important as well as far as new characters go, but actually Gamora was just, oh man, uh, so, so good. And so it makes me wonder, are we going to get a Scarlet Witch that's like Gamora, or are we going to get a Scarlet Witch that's more like Beast or Nebula? You know, like, Nebula was really good, but she wasn't, you know, the top, right? Like, she was really important to the team. You might six-red her possibly, previous. some people did previously. I did not, I kept her at five. Uh, but she might be in the running for that. So, you know, how balanced is that gonna approach gonna be? Now, jumping ahead a little bit, you know, I think Omega Red might not be a fair comparison here because it's a war team. It might depend on the context of the team. That's why I wanted to use Infinity Watch as that basis because, well, I think that's the closest it's going to come as an arena meta team and uh, to what we're looking forward to now. So I just wanted to go over some of these reworks. You know, Web Warriors saw a really good one as well. Uh, we saw some pretty good ones with Ghost Rider and Elsa, more more particularly the Elsa. But definitely and Squirrel Girl got a really good rework for Young Avengers. So they have a pretty good impetus to, to you know, upgrade these characters that it's been pretty fair. The base stats have been pretty sizable. The Web Warriors for Miles and OG Spider-Man saw a pretty significant rework. So I am confident that when they do get reworked that it's going to be uh, really important to the game and so you know next off i want to talk about these two characters in more detail like for me you know when infinity watch came out gamora just got that seven red right like and that was so important to me like as soon as i could i actually got her all the way up to gear tier 15 and uh seven red so that told me that she was a really important member of this infinity watch team so fast forward to what's going to be next month really i have scarlet witch here and I got the costume, by the way. And yes, okay, I'm a bit biased here. I know you guys are probably seeing this once again. Boylan is a character that's being reworked from a patch. First, it was Squirrel Girl. Now it's Scarlet Witch. So what am I planning on doing with this? Obviously, I want it to be good because I happen to pull the seven red. I think um, I was pulling for one of the... It might have been Omega Red, actually. I was pulling for one of the newer characters. I was pulling Elite Fives at the time, and I pulled an Elite Seven, uh, a Seven Red Scarlet Witch. And at the time, I was like, fuck, this was awful. And then now I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> I'll just, you know, I've, I've been getting some kind of good luck when it comes to shitty characters that somehow have been getting reworked. So I won't uh, complain about that here. But as far as Scarlet Witch and her kit, now, kit goes now, she needs a lot of rework, I think, you know, and her base stats. So as far as the reds go, the, the seven red goes, um, she's one of these characters now that's kind of a bit of a kit character, right? You know, she like, she doesn't really do damage. Her armor is zero. So as far as her base stats scaling from red stars, it's not super good. Um, so I don't know if this part's going to get changed. I would really like to see her actually get armor or there would be some reason why she does not have armor. There's so few characters in this game that actually have zero armor. And unless I'm missing some, it's her 
Kingpin and Swarm. Um, not sure if I'm missing out on anyone. Let me know in the comments down below if I miss someone that has zero armor. Uh, but those are the ones that stand out to me that have zero armor, which means that when they take damage, they take the full amount of damage, which means either these barriers have to be really fucking crazy or her health has to be through the roof. And Kingpin had, and, and to some degree Swarm as well, you know, had a sizable hit point. Uh, for his time, Kingpin had, had a decent chunk of hit points. Um, Scarlet Witch did not. So she would need like well over half a million hit points, you know, at at, at, at like your tier 14 or, or more, frankly, to make up for the fact that she has zero armor. And this is a big sticking point to me for Scarlet Witch. So I would like to see armor added to her. Otherwise, her kit needs to be really, really good, have damage reduction even in her passive or something like that, that would negate this because this is very crippling when she gets hit by like someone that has high damage. Um, you know, it's going to do a crazy ton of damage. So as far as her kids goes, she was a really important character actually in the old, old days, like two years plus, because she was very instrumental in helping people clear the Mystic campaign when there was basically nothing available. And a lot of the reasons was actually because of her basic, because she was the only character that could apply random negative effects to her, uh, to this. Now, this might need some clearing up, because random negative effects, this was different before a lot of things got added. So this is offense down defense down and speed down i'm pretty sure those are the only three that actually are part of this and so for that reason it doesn't contain things like you know bleed disrupt all these other things that exist now that did never existed in the past uh so it was a very good basic and it really helped you kind of control the field when it came to certain harder fights certain harder campaign uh levels believe it or not in the mystic campaign before they got those op characters that were released later on now Warp Reality, her special, I think this is going to be really important to this aspect combo, combining with the Darkhold team and with Morgan. So, redistribute your total squad health evenly, apply deflect to all allies, 50% chance to apply defense up, you know, and I think this is where you're probably going to need to see some barrier addition as well to this, I think to really, like, uh, you're warping reality, I mean, you need more than that, maybe. Maybe it's going to redistribute uh, or, or health steal from the enemy as well, that would be really nice too, I think that could be something that I could get behind is that not only are you redistributing uh, your uh, squad's health, maybe before that you're stealing health from the enemy as well and then redistributing all of that to your squad. Then apply the deflect and then that really should be like a hundred percent. Well, the T4 has it. I guess the T4 will have to do a little bit more, I think, uh, when the rework happens and then defense up to all allies is pretty cool as well. Now, what's interesting about her ultimate uh, chaos wave now this is where things will need to get a rework as well however i am hoping this does not get nerfed and i say that and they, they don't normally nerf things but they have adjusted things so i i, I want to point out the squirrel girls ultimate did get i don't know if you want to call it a nerf but it was changed so squirrel girls all for example for the young avengers rework um had offense down and bleed on it and now it does offense down and heal block so they got rid of the bleed and put on the heal block that might be better from for a war defense perspective but it was changed nonetheless and her damage went down so for scarlet witch the big the one thing that i'm concerned about the most actually is this each target has all negative effects prolonged by a duration of one it is a very long cooldown by the way uh but this particularly is a concern to me because a lot of the newer characters that you can see when they either spread or they prolong they don't do that for certain uh ones like stun or ability block now this just like symbiote spider-man and some of the other characters like doc ock they are old characters before they decided to do away with this kind of stuff and does actually work for all debuffs so i i hope when they change her they do not also do that as well because now that it's going to be a meta like a pretty heavy meta team i am kind of scared that they might decide to nerf this portion and might exclude ability block and stun because that's super crippling the devs have admitted that that's super powerful and they don't really want to that's why they don't add it on characters now that new characters cannot spread ability block if this character has four or more supernatural allies i suspect that this is going to this part's going to get changed to um to dark hold or something's going to get changed here a uh, 50 percent chance to apply defense down it always applies with the t4 so i suspect uh this is also going to include uh dark hold allies but I, I think that more needs to be done with this i think that we need more damage i think the numbers while she's not a damaged character she is a controller 
just to confirm yes she is a controller and so this part probably needs some increase it is piercing damage but 100 percent with a t4 is incredibly low i think this probably needs to be doubled at the very least uh to do more damage and because really unless the basic does some sort of damage alongside of it i'm hoping because i got high reds and so i don't want to see her uh you know kind of be useless on the red front because a lot of characters who are kind of more kit focused you don't really need to have too high of reds other than for survivability aspects now a uh, power of kathon uh this is her wait this is the character that we were talking about yeah see like i said i don't really know too much about is this the right kathon i thought kathon was cth uh, not CHT. I don't know. I'm not too knowledgeable about the lore here. Let me know in the comments down below about that as well. Uh, so on turn, chance to spread a negative effect from an enemy with a negative effect to an adjacent target. So uh, this could be good, but the 40% and even 50% with the T4 is too low. It would have to be guaranteed uh, with the T4, I think, in order for that to work. And I think we need more. We need way more. And the passive is normally where they do make lots of alterations to. So, I mean, come on. Let's let's go jump back to, uh, what's her name? Uh, Morgan. Look at all this, right? On spawn, on spawn. Like three, four, seven points. Now, one of them is arena text. Uh, but otherwise, you have seven regular bullet points and then one arena now yes she is a legendary character but give some respect to scarlet witch you know there's one or two if you even count this one because it does not spread stun so i really just count this part a one bullet point let's add three or four more on right okay so like the team gets some buffs i don't know she does some crazy shit whatever it happens to be maybe she gets an empowered form hey i would totally be okay with that because at the end of the day i want scarlet witch to be good I want her to be meta. I want her to be the queen that she deserves to be because Scarlet Witch is amazing and awesome. Uh, I will be getting her up soon after I get my Dark Hunters up because of the Scourge event. And after that, I'm going to be getting this uh, bad woman up to uh, level 80 plus. So let me know in the comments down below. Uh, what are your plans for Scarlet Witch? What hopes do you have for her? Do you have the costume? Did you care about that at all? Uh, you know, do you want to see Scarlet Witch being good just like I do? I know I'm biased, but I think there's a lot of people out there that would love to see Scarlet Witch being as powerful as she deserves to be, both in the comic lore and in the MCU and in Marvel Strike Force. So all of that and more coming soon. Uh, well, that's the end of the video. And until next time, stay safe and healthy. And I'll see y'all later. Oil on signing out.